Hi, and welcome to the 10 square meter workshop. I've just built a new pulp table, or MFT if you want to call it that. Why? More after this. I thought for some time that my table was just a tad too big. I still wanted the 8x12 dog holes, but with not so much space around them. In a small workshop, every little helps. Then, I acquired some very nice Baltic ply. 80mm 13 ply without voids etc. Much better than the ply my existing table. This was a spur to build one. I built the table first, with the fittings to allow it to sit on my table saw router trolley. Here it is, having been varnished inside and out before making the holes. This seals the table against moisture and gives a more durable surface. My first table was bored using the PATH rulers and jig system, but I found that tedious to do, and I have a CNC machine now. I made this template, which is half the size of my new table, as big as I can cut in my machine, which is a WorkBee 750 by 1000 mil. Before doing so, I carefully calibrated it for dimensions and squareness. Although I made mine, such templates can be bought, or borrowed if you're lucky, there are two ways to make the holes, a force in a bit like this, or a trim router like this. I chose the latter for a number of reasons. Firstly, using a router gives you a fixed base to manoeuvre the cutter, ensuring it's vertical. Secondly, because there's already a hole there to start the process, just extraction is easy, with a strong flow through the hole. With a force in a bit, extraction can be difficult, and dust around the bit can cause wandering and friction heat to build up. Thirdly, there's no tear out on the bottom face of the hole. The template is lined up and clamped to one half of the table. The first two holes are made at opposite sides and long dogs inserted as soon as they are finished. This prevents any movement while the rest are drilled and routed. The template is then moved across and locked with dogs into the last row. The holes are then made in the same way. Then the last row is made by repeating again. You can actually do any size table in this manner, but the minimum of moves maintains the best accuracy. My method is to drill a central hole first, of 13mm to allow the router bit to be inserted. I use a steel guide bush to do this. It does not need to be exact, it is just to protect the template and to ensure the drill tear out is removed by the router. The router is then inserted, started and slowly rotated around the template hole. When fully cut, switch off and remove. So here is my new table. It's a little smaller than my previous, as you can see, a useful saving in space. And here it is, ready to make cuts. A few words on accuracy. If we're to believe some YouTubers, this sort of table can give accuracy in right angle cuts of a couple of hundredths of a millimetre across the width of the table. Any analysis of the factors involved show that this is a wishful thinking. MDF, for example, can move more than that with just a change in its moisture content of 0.1%. And it does not fully return when it's dried out again. One of the reasons I'm using ply. Temperature changes also has a measurable effect. Is your workshop temperature and humidity controlled to that extent? Thought not. But of course, it doesn't actually matter. The material you are cutting will move during its life too. A length of good quality ply that I was using as a fence, bent by a full 2mm on less than a metre length over 6 months, I changed it for metal. As long as your cutting system is markedly better than the material, it's good for purpose. Don't get hung up on the numbers. 
My own approach is to wait a couple of weeks for everything to settle and then adjust my cutting rail to be square. This is done by adding shims to the alignment blocks against the dogs. When it's correct, I mill the thickness of the shims from the block that is relevant. The shims are in thou, that is a thousandth of an inch. That really is good enough. The YouTube universe is not short of videos for building on this sort of table. But I hope that my slander was of interest. Until the next time, keep safe and keep real.